Well, hello. This is the Empirical Audio File. I'm here to do a review of the MDA-200. The MDA-200 is the only DAC that Macintosh makes that's separate and not built into a piece of equipment. So I thought I would do a review of this DAC. Now, <clears throat> disclaimer is no, Macintosh should not send me this DAC to review for them. This is something I bought on my own. A lot of times when you buy Macintosh equipment, you're allowed to have anywhere between 30 to 60 days to try it out, see if you like it, and you can send it back if you don't like it. So I've been trying to get a review on this DAC. And the reason is, if you've been watching my channel, is the DAC I had in here was the Premier 9. It's a tube DAC with a floating chassis. And uh, to compare, let's say, the DAC that you see here compared to a Premier 9, this is a 13-pound DAC. The Premier 9 is 30 pounds. Huge difference in the quality of the two DACs. Uh, the Premier 9, if it was sold today, would probably go for at least $10,000 if you wanted to buy the same DAC today. The thing about new DACs compared to like the Premier 9, even though it weighs over 30 pounds, is now they have a lot of bells and whistles on them that uh, 29 years ago they did not have. Now, this Conrad Johnson equipment was made during the precipice of, of when these high-end companies really came into their own. Uh, that would be, you know, Mark Levinston, uh, Audio Research, your Conrad Johnson. And uh, that was about the time when things were at their best, were in the 90s. So I decided, well, everyone keeps talking about on reviews, which I'm sure you have watched, um, how advanced DACs have become since, of course, the 90s or older DACs. Some people have even made the claim that uh, within five or six years, your DAC is obsolete. So this is going to be a, probably a, a lengthy review. So if you don't have the attention span to want to watch something like this or to learn something uh, in a review, uh, this review is not going to be for you. This is, this is something I did a lot of time with, worked a lot of time on to find out exactly in 29 years, have we really come that far with DACs and equipment. Well, we already know that equipment, as far as equipment goes, no, we really haven't come that far in 29 years to make amps and preamps sound far, far superior than they were during the heydays of the 90s. We find that out that, no, it, it just isn't there. The Conrad Johnson DAC, weighing over 30 pounds, has a floating chassis. And that has two tubes in it. And uh, it is a wonderful sounding DAC. In fact, I read on some of the forums that people who sold their Premier 9 regret it. They wish they still had it because they just sound right for a DAC, even being that old. But let me get on with this review. Conrad Johnson is considered to be a high-end company, just like Mark Levinson, which you all heard of and everything else. Now, why would I choose to get a CD transport and a DAC? The transport, I hooked up with the DAC from the Conrad Johnson, and I did a review on that in case you want to read more about the transport here, which would be the uh, MCT500 over here. It's a very nice transport. It's got all the bells and whistles on it, and it can be connected up to other Macintosh equipment. Uh, what, what they call through a uh, power control cables. So through power control cables, this can communicate with this 
and this communicates with this. All the cables do is so you're able to um, do volume. You can do switching, and I'll show you a little bit of that. So if you want to turn it on, it comes with the DAC comes with the same as the uh, transport. They come with plastic remotes, and you would expect for this price, most people would say, "How come they don't come with a nice billet aluminum remote like other manufacturers?" What is it? What what is Macintosh doing coming out with plastic remote controls for very expensive equipment. Well, that's up to you to decide whether or not um, a plastic remote control makes a big difference to you versus a maybe a billet aluminum remote control where everything's in it. But I know that some people feel that for the price you're paying for this, it should come with not plastic remote controls, but billet aluminum remote control, something nice, something to make you feel you got your money's worth. That's entirely up to you. This review is not to review remote controls. Okay, so the thing about it is you can connect these two pieces up. And before I get into that, there's really no reviews about this MDA 200. Because the MDA is the only one Macintosh sells. And there is a very good review if you want to read one from Audio Advisor. And Audio Advisor does a very nice review on the MDA 200 of what it sounds like, a little bit about what it sounds like, but basically all the th bells and whistles on the back and all the hookups it has. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to waste your time. You can just go to the Audio Advisor review, and it will tell you everything you want to know about this stack, about hooking it up. What I'm going to show you, though, is something that they don't really go on, is the hookups that are in, in the back of it with uh, power control cables. Now, Macintosh sells power control cables for the equipment. Power control tables, marry this with this. So now, whatever this does, if you turn it on, that turns on. So because of those cables, you're unifying the two pieces together, That which is nice. Now you can use either remote control, whether you use the remote control that comes with the uh, CD player over there, which it's, it's not a... It's, uh, it's a transport, basically, is all it is. It doesn't, it, it needs to have a DAC or this needs to be connected up to something of Max or any DA converter. Okay, so this goes good. It, it married very good with my Conrad Johnson, but Max sells a lot of equipment that this transport can marry to and also use the power control cables. And as you can see, once you hook up the power control cables, you're able to turn on and off both of them at once by using any of the remote controls. Very nice feature. I have to admit that I kind of like that. Now, next question somebody may ask, well, why would you buy two separate parts when Macintosh does sell complete transports? And especially the... Uh, MCD-12000. Now, the MCD-12000 is their uh, player, is their hybrid drive with vacuum tubes in it. And it's able to uh, play CDs with or without vacuum tubes, okay? The Conrad Johnson Premier 9 is vacuum tube. That would be a vacuum tube, but it gives you a choice. Well, it's a very expensive transport. And let me tell you something, if you are probably knew this, back in the heyday, back in the 90s, we had companies like uh, Mark Levinson that made all-in-one CD players. You had Wadia made beautiful all-in-one CD players, absolutely gorgeous. They, uh, they went directly to your amp. You didn't need a preamp. If, all, if your source was only digital, beautiful. Uh, Krell. 
made all in one CD player. Beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship. Uh, Soteric made beautiful ones. Uh, Jaded made beautiful all in one CD player transports. Well, today, all these combination, your, uh, your CD players are pretty well useless because they can't be upgraded. They're all in one. You, you can't upgrade the transport and you can't upgrade the DA converter that's in there. And basically you're stuck with what you've got. Now I know the Macintosh makes an MCD 12,000, but I saw nothing on any of the literature or anything that indicated that the MCD 12,000 SAC CD player uh, combination was upgradable. And you don't want to be stuck with something you can't upgrade. This, on the other hand, is not, uh, not something that uh, you're going to be stuck with that will become obsolete. In fact, I found, and I looked on the Internet just to come up with uh, what I get. Uh, I came up with eight different Macintosh products that they sell today that uses the DA2 digital DAC installed into their equipment, whether it's a receiver, whether it's an integrated amp, the DA2 has been installed. There's one product, uh, the MA5300, which uh, has the DA1 in it. And the DA1 um, can be upgraded to a DA2. Now, upgrading this is very, very easy. In the back, you undo a couple of screws. You may have to take the top off. It's nothing complicated. I've replaced circuit boards that cost over $25,000 in CNC equipment and uh, never had a problem with them. The only thing you have to make sure with circuit boards is you don't have any static electricity. Other than that, it's relatively simple and you don't have to take, <coughs> excuse me, the whole DAC into a service center and wait for them to install it. it if you have installed RAM in a computer, then you can install and upgrade. So because Macintosh, their, their MA12000, which is highly rated integrated amp, highly rated 350 watt integrated amp using the DA2 that's in here. And it's got nothing but rave reviews of how great it sounds, the MA12000, using this DA2 DAC that's in here. Then we have the MA9500, which is not a tube uh, integrated amp. Once again, it uses the DA2. And the MA8950, you have the MA7200, you have the MA uh, MAC 7200, you have the MA 9000, and you have the MA 8900. All of them use that DA2, which means since it's upgradable, Macintosh has a lot in stake in their equipment to upgrade to a DA3 or a DA4 and to sell it because they have a lot of products on their product line that are using this stack, whether it's built in or a separate one like this. So they got a lot at stake, and that's good because in two or three years, if they decide to upgrade, you can just pay for the upgrade, install it yourself, and you're done. You now have an updated deck. And with these new decks and new integrated amps, they have all the bells and whistles for connections. And they have uh, connections, of course, for your power control cables. So each one can talk to each piece of equipment that the Mac makes. So if you want to switch, right now this is at coaxial. If I want to switch, the remote that comes with this allows me to switch from coaxial 1 to coaxial 2 to uh, OPT1 to OPT2, to USB, and MCT. Now, MCT is a proprietary cable that they give you. I think it has like nine pins connected to it, 
It's the size of a normal cable, nothing special. I can only imagine the wire inside of it must be 28 gauge or, or higher copper wire. Uh, it claims it's twisted copper wire. So for uh, RF, and it's about five foot long, but that's a proprietary cable, the MCT proprietary cable that connects up this to this. So you can play SACD on your system. Without it, you can only play Red Book CDs or, or your, all your other CDs you can play, but you just won't get the SHCD quality without the proprietary cable of the MCT. And then you can go on to that to the uh, HDMI arc if you want, which would be connected to your TV set or once again back to coaxial one. Now, in order to do this review with these two pieces, I connected up the MCT proprietary cable. I also connected up coax one with a Kimber Illuminati, and I also connected up the optical, which would be right here. OPT1 is your optical. That's with a Kimber optical I connected up. So I have three different cables talking to this. Now, if you get it all in one CD player, you can't do that. You can't change what the manufacturer has put inside of it. You're stuck with what they give you. So that's it. Plus the fact your power supplies now are far enough apart, they're not going to cause uh, RF interference or anything else. Sometimes buying separates do pay off in the long run than buying an all-in-one. Plus, believe it or not, this and this is a lot cheaper than buying the uh, uh, MCD 12,000. A lot cheaper. You will save thousands and thousands of dollars by going this route versus the route of the MCD. How much sound quality will you be missing or gaining? Well, that's need to be said. But this review is about this DA converter here, the MDA 200. So now I can try it with different cables. Now I can tune it to the way I like it with different cables to see sonically if these cables make a difference and does it make a difference to me to use that cable over another cable or the proprietary MCT cable that Macintosh gives you with the transport. So that's another thing I like. So let's get into the review. I tried the MCT and I listened to it with optical and I listened to it with the your optical cable, but I also listened to it with coax and I listened to it with uh, the MCT plus your optical. So out of all of them, if you don't want to listen anymore, out of all of them, I prefer the coax using the Kimber Illuminati. That's just me and my preference. And I'm going to get into the review why I prefer the coax over the proprietary MCT cable. The MCT cable is basically if you're going to play SAT, you know, SACDs. I have some SACDs and I am, this is a Jazz at the Pawn Shop SACD. I, this is a normal jazz at the pawn shop. Uh, this one I've had uh, um, for years. And this one is is uh, SHCD one, or you can play it normal. And I have a, other SAC CDs. And I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm not impressed with the SHCD. Now, of course, I only have about five or six SA CDs in my collection of thousands of CDs. But uh, just to be honest, if you're going to buy something like this, thinking that you want to get the best, the ultimate, the one step up, some people will say, if all I can get is that 1%, I'm going to take it. If you think you're going to get that off the SA CDs, I don't hear it. Uh, on the forums, I'll check some people. I have mentioned that the most they heard off the SACDs is that they were louder. Well, I did not notice that myself, 
but I just did not notice the high quality that they were supposed to give. But like I said, I only have a few SACDs. I don't have a plethora of SACDs that I could give you a real good review on. Yes, they are better. The ones I have are good. Okay. But I think there's other CDs out there that are better. So if you go to the MCT, that is the only way you can listen to SAC CDs. But I'm just being honest with you. I, um, I wouldn't count on that being the ultimate of your listening experience. The cable that they give you is not an ultimate cable. That's why I went to the coax. The coax is solid silver Illuminati cable, Kimber cable. Uh, it's not a cheap cable interconnect between this and this, but I will get into just what I heard with this. Well, the first thing is, what did I find? Why did I go this route? Is it worth it? Now, the good thing of it is, if you have a player like this, you can also have a streamer. And you can hook a streamer up to it and put that into your pre So it will do more than just play CDs. But I'm going with CDs. I like CDs because I don't know about you, but when I sit down and I listen to music, uh, I'm, I want to hear everything. I'm pretty anal. I sit down. Not only do I want to listen to the music, the sound staging, but I want to hear everything that's on a recording. And from everybody I have talked to who says streamer, streaming is good, but it's not the best. Actually, if you want the best, you have to go with CDs. And CDs such as like these CDs right here, this Chesky here, and you've got another Chesky here with I Ching, and this one is Rebecca Pigeon. These CDs are 128 times over sampling. This one and this one. And I have several of these 128 time over sampling CDs. These to me definitely sound better than an SACD. If you get the ones and it will say right on there, 128 times over sampling. Okay. Now, the thing about this DA converter along with the transport, I will tell you is if you Get the I Ching, for example, 128 times over sampling. This could get kind of complicated. And when it's playing the sound stage, you may have several instruments, but never did this glom up the instruments. And what I mean by that exactly, if you listen to an orchestra and let's say it has, uh, you know, seven violins, uh, you can't distinguish all seven violins. Okay. But with this, when you play something like this I Ching, for example, at 128 times over sampling, even though there are instruments on top of instruments on top, never do they glom together. They all become separate entities in the sound staging. So it, it manages to keep separate all the instruments all the time. And I noticed something that the sound will sound louder using coax than using the MCT. And believe me, I went over this time and time again, listening, what is going on? Why does the coax with the Kimber cable sound louder than the MCT proprietary cable that Macintosh gives you? Now, there was another review where they did the transport along with one of the Mac uh, integrated amps, I think, with the, with the built-in DA2, and all they tried it with was the MCT. Their review was basically the MCT cable, and they said they didn't like it. Well, I've tried it with all of them. The optical one, it wasn't that good. So it, it was, it's good, but it doesn't beat the MCT or the coax. Why does the coax sound louder? So I decided I had to do some tests. What is going on with the coax? Well, I put a decibel meter up. No, it's no, it's not louder. It's not playing any louder. There's uh, settings that you can set in here to for loudness. Everything's set the same. So 
If I switch over from MCT, the proprietary cable, to the coax, it should sound the same loudness. But it changes things in the sound stage also. Oh, wow, what, what's going on here? Why does the coax change the sound stage? For example, the sound stage, like on this CD right here, uh, Ellison Cross Union Station. You play this CD. Now, one of the songs I guess are popular, It Doesn't Matter. And there's a song before that, uh, Little uh, Lisa Jane, number six and number seven, It Doesn't Matter. On the song on this, It Doesn't Matter, if you play it on the MCT, the voice is a little back. And it, it, uh, it presents the music very close to the Conrad Johnson Premier 9. Well, that's 29 year old technology. However, if you put the coax on, it changes it. Her voice comes and sounds the same level as what the instruments would be, comes a little more forward with that, but it does sound louder. And I'm thinking, why, why does her voice sound louder with one cable? And yet it sounds a little back in the, in the sound stage and presents itself a little different with another cable. So I start doing some research to find out. And uh, there's a lot of tricks. And one is by uh, banning sound across the stereo field, you allow your sound and instruments to stand out and prevent multiple sounds from masking each other. As a result, your individual sounds will cut through the mix better increasing perceived loudness. So in other words, if the coaxial cable is sending the information through it and it's not making, if you look at your frequency and it doesn't make any dips like maybe the MTC cable is doing, it is only copper. Remember, the other one is pure silver. One thing that silver does, it will add bass and add to the high frequencies. That's a characteristic of silver. For people who use silver, that's the reason they use it. So if the silver or the Luminati is presenting everything and not making anything dip, meaning any other frequencies dip down lower than other frequencies, if it brings those frequencies up so you can hear them, therefore, to the human ear, it's going to sound louder. If the MCT cable, on the other hand, because it's only copper, is making it different, meaning that it may take a dip in certain frequencies, then it's not going to sound as loud. And it, and it, to me, it sounded more like, let's talk about sound staging. Now, I believe the sound staging to the Conrad Johnson Premier 9 was deeper. Uh, it uses high-end parts and the way it's been executed, how the engineers execute it, uh, like this also floats in here. There's springs in here, you undo some screws and the chassis will float. The same way with the Premier 9. You undo some screws, the chassis floats in there to stop any micro vibrations coming into your DA converter. Okay, so I thought, well, what the heck? I have this very expensive uh, townshed air bladder. Okay. And basically this air bladder, if you put it under a piece of equipment, acts the same way as like the Conrad Johnson puts its circuit boards with springs to allow it to float. That's what this townshed does. I, th I think they still sell these air bladders. But anyhow, since I had the air bladder on hand, I decided to put the Macintosh DA converter on this. That changed everything because now this is floating just like the Conrad Johnson Premier 9 and it made a difference. Now, definitely, definitely you could hear a difference between MCT and coaxial. Definitely with uh, without any problem. I put a lot of hours into listening to this. Right like this, for example, Spanish Harlem on this Rebecca Pigeon, which is once again 128 times oversampling. In here, 
There's a Morocco very softly in the background, and this does pull it out the same as what the Conrad Johnson does. So you can hear it in space. The sound staging is good. Is it as deep as maybe the old Conrad Johnson? From what I can tell, no, it is not. Conrad Johnson, with its tubes, just seems to have a deeper sound stage than what this is. Yet, a lot of people who have reviewed integrated amps and stuff with the DA2 DAC in it have raved about the sound stage. But I found the old Conrad Johnson had a better sound stage than the Macintosh has. I'm just telling you the way I heard it, people. But it does have a very good sound stage. It's very detailed. Uh, you will hear things that are small little details that did not think exist. For example, I'll give you some examples. For Okay, we'll take this one, Lou Reed. Okay, I just got this CD no more than two, three months ago. And uh, I wasn't, uh, oh, I, I wasn't really thinking it's going to be that good. It's a very old walk on the wild side. Uh, when I was a kid, they used to play it on the radio. And uh, I never really heard it off of a nice system. Okay. So I wasn't expecting much from it. It's probably, you know, garbage. I mean, it's, a, it's an old song played, I think, in the 70s or whatever. And I didn't think much. But believe it or not, it doesn't sound bad at all. And on the Conrad Johnson, the end saxophone, it put the end saxophone up front where the Macintosh puts the saxophone more deeper into the sound stage. Two different ways of how the DA converters are reacting with the exact same transport, mind you. So I'm using the exact same transport, but this puts that saxophone back in the sound stage where the Conrad Johnson put it more up forward, the ending saxophone. Another thing is, but is, is uh, when he sings the color girl sing, in the sound stage, the women, when they start singing the, that part, they start at the right-hand side. If you're facing your speakers, they will start deep in the right-hand side, and then they will come across the sound stage and end up in the center. Now, I never thought that existed, of course, because I never listened to this song off of a nice stereo system. All I thought is it started out soft and came way back on the right-hand side, and then it came across, the engineer had it come across the sound stage to the front. I didn't know that happened. It's, it's pretty neat. It's a pretty decent CD. I was relatively shocked that it was a decent CD for as old as it is. Then we got the Doors CD here. And, of course, if you listen to Riders on the Storm, the Macintosh here plays it real nice. The organ is a little overdone when the organ solo comes up. That's going to be on your left-hand side. Uh, the engineer, to me, made it a little overdone, but he's doing his solo. But you will hear sounds on Riders on the Storm, little bits of stuff that you didn't hear off the Conrad Johnson. So this is revealing more detail. If you're a detail nut, then definitely this is going to produce more detail. I was hearing some sounds that I was quite surprised. Another thing I noticed compared to, let's say, the Conrad Johnson is the clarity of voice. I, I was always dumbfounded at some of the singing that was going on, some of the lyrics that... Well, we all know sometimes you hear lyrics and they're not very clear and you're wondering what are the lyrics and sometimes they have to put the lyrics in writing. Was listening because the Macintosh makes stuff so clear. There was one of the lyrics that I listened to, Writers on the Storm, that I was quite surprised. And uh, what is that? He sings like a dog without a bone and an actor out alone. That comes through very clearly where you can say here he's saying out alone. I never knew 
because I never really looked at the what he was saying uh, on his own. That's what I thought he was singing, like an actor on his own. But it, he is singing out alone. The Macintosh, you can hear it very distinctly, very clearly. He says, out alone, not on his own. And you can see where if your system or if your DAT isn't really as clear as you would like it to be, you're going to end up, if you don't know the linear notes, you're going to think something different. But I got to admit, the Macintosh in this case represented itself as very articulate in the enunciation of words of singers and the instruments, the timbre of, of instruments, their placement and how they sound. I found out that through the Ellison Cross CD that when I played the CD and I played uh, track number six, which is uh, Little Lisa Jane, which is an instrumental, they have a banjo. I play banjo, and my brother played uh, uh, clarinet. So I'm very attuned to clarinets and banjos. I play a banjo, I know. Now, when I played the banjo using the MCT, proprietary cable, it, it sounded off. Tonal-wise, it was a little off. And I have to admit that. I heard it, and I thought, uh, does some, some, something's not sounding right with that banjo in there when it did its solo. When I put it on the coaxial one, the banjo came to sound more like a real banjo. The tonal quality was was there. Whether you want to say the timbre was there or whatever, but that's the reason I like the coaxial versus the MCT because it did little things to bring out the music in its true form. There's another thing I wanted to bring out that this is real good at doing in case you're thinking about buying this combination and not spending thousands or more on the more expensive transport for uh, Kodo drummers of Japan. I like these Kodo drummers of Japan. There's, there's Kodo here and there's Kodo here. One's by Sheffield and this is a different one by uh, Transstar Music. These are both excellent sounding CDs if you like drums. Now there's one thing about these drum CDs is they are not made for little seven inch woofers. You now let's face facts. If you're going to play one of these and like this one says, play it loud, that's how you're going to play it. You want the impact of the drums. And these are this, these have a big wide dynamic range. And if you have a dynamic range of 98 dB, that's pretty loud, and it's very soft. Once these drums start banging, a little 7-inch woofer is not going to do it. These I have the big 15-inch woofers. You're going to need something big to reproduce the sound. You're going to need big bass, big woofers to give that impact like it's supposed to be. This portrays everything in spades. doesn't take anything away from the impact. It does just as good as a job as the Conrad Johnson did as far as portraying bass. It doesn't take anything away. It doesn't add anything to the bass. It doesn't bloat it. And you can literally, if you, you have to play it loud enough, believe me. If you play it loud enough, you will, it almost feels like you will feel that sound wave hitting you. And that's how the Macintosh portray, portrays the sound wave of the drum. If played loud enough, it doesn't distort it. It plays it very clear. You can literally hear the skin of the drum moving in and out after each hit. This will portray it. I can't say any more than that. If your system isn't up to par, of course, you're not going to hear that or feel it and witness it. But on the system here, you definitely can feel it. Then we come to this one. This is called Bug Music. It was highly recommended in Stereophile. It uh, it basically sounds like Hell Roach music. If you're not familiar with Hell Roach, go uh, on YouTube and watch A Little Rascals, and you'll find out what Hell Roach is. This has a 
antique quality sound to it from like the 1920s, but it's modern day, very well recorded. Uh, it has some very good, like powerhouse, has some very good tunes on it. And of course, once again, the Macintosh with its transport reproduced it all in its glory. It never became harsh. You can hear the antique sound of the instruments that are being played. Definitely made a difference on top of the Townsend. So that kind of tells me that DA converters we have here, the Townsend ladder, this kind of tells me that DA converters really do better if they are on a bladder or if they're floating, or maybe if you're using points, which a lot of my equipment is on points to ground them. But this made a bigger difference than points did by actually floating the whole DA converter where you would hear more into the sound stage than without it. And then it definitely blew away the MCT proprietary cable that Macintosh gives you. And all things that you want, you want your dynamic range. Like let's say for this Casper CD right here, this CD has a wide, wide dynamic range. And some of the bass on here, compared to the bass like on the Kodo drummers, some of the bass on here goes very, very low. You will hear it. It will almost turn into a rumble. So you... uh LTEX I have can go to 35 and they will drop off at 30 because of the modifications I made on them. But you can hear that rumble, very deep, deep bass with this. And it has a dynamic range that will literally blow you out of your seat. So these are things you have to watch out for with like these drum CDs or this Casper CDs, the dynamic range is unbelievable. And most people, if I play this at a level that they like, some of the, dyna the dynamic range is so unbelievable, and this portrays it, that it, it just jerks them in their seat. They, they, they weren't ready for it. It's almost like they're on a carnival ride. That's what I like about music, when I listen to music. I like that. I like the feeling you get when you hear the music, and it does startle you. I like it where you can hear the instruments in the background. Like I said, the I Ching. This gets a lot of instruments. It gets complicated. One instrument after another, and never do they glom together. You can definitely hear each instrument. In fact, it becomes, and this may not be something that you like, but it becomes a point where if someone's playing a piano, you can literally see the piano across the sound stage where every key is being hit. Some people like that, and some people would prefer not to have that nuisance distracting them from the music. I like it. I like to hear it. The uh, DA2 does it in spades. It reproduces everything the way it does, just like the Conrad Johnson did. Has this improved? And is this a great leaps and bounds improvement over a Premier 9? And I'm going to have to be honest with you, in all honesty, I would have to say, as far as all the connections, goals, and bells and whistles, that's a fast improvement. Sonically, no. And that's only giving you the truth. Sonically, it just is very good. But the Premier 9, remember, that's a top-of-the-line DA converter made in its heyday. Have we advanced that much with chips and everything else where some of these high-end CD players of days of yore are trash? And then, no. Okay, some people, I know that I've listened to both of them. Some may prefer the sound of the Premier 9 over this. This may sound a little more sterile than the Premier 9 because the Premier 9 has tubes in it and may have a little bit of a, a warmth to it. It's something that uh, even when I heard this and plugged it in for the first time, it sounded harsh to me. 
And I thought, no, nah, this, this is not going to fly. No, this, this is not going to fly. This thing sounds, compared to the Conrad Johnson Premier and I, harsh. I said, well, I'll give it time to break in. Maybe it needs to break in. Well, it does need time to break in, I found out. Never been an advocate of, oh, you've got to break in equipment, but this needs time to break in because it may sound a little harsh to you when you set it up, and I know you're listening to this review, and if you did buy something like this and it may sound a little harsh, you'll be thinking to yourself, what is this guy talking about? This this doesn't sound very good. You have to give the equipment time to break in. As it broke in, then that harshness went away and it, it settled in. The only thing I can tell you is if you want to listen to what a Conrad Johnson Premier 9 sounds like, you put it on the proprietary cable, the MCT. You're basically almost going to get the Premier 9. However, if you want to up your game, and you're the kind of audiophile who needs to get that last bit and you're anal and you need to get that last bit of everything off of that disc. Coaxial is the way to do with the Luminati that I'm using and putting it on the air bladder, the Townshed air bladder. Definitely, definitely is going to make a huge difference in the sound quality of this particular piece. Plus, it's upgradable. So that's basically my review. I gave you an honest review on it. I'm not selling a product. This was not given to me. I have 60 days to review it and get it back if I don't like it. So until next time, this is the Empirical Audio File. Happy listening, and thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.